in an ongoing effort to continue to share information with all of you, because we're getting lots and lots of continued questions regarding the recent outbreaks of rabbit hemorrhagic virus, we wanted to give you a little bit of an update of the current status. First of all, I want to give a call out to some key organizations that have been really been banding together to share information and to work to push things forward. Uh, the Association of Exotic Mammal Veterinarians, the House Rabbit Society, as well as other numerous rabbit advocacy groups have really been working together to share information and will continue to drive as we continue to learn more information about this virus. So let's highlight on the states and the specific area where we've seen outbreaks and what new information has kind of come to the, to the table. First of all, looking at Arizona and New Mexico. Unfortunately, we do know that there are ongoing outbreaks that have affected not only wild rabbits, but also unfortunately domesticated rabbits. I'm not aware of any new information out of Texas. We also know in Colorado, there was a very small number of wild rabbits that were confirmed with the disease. But to my knowledge, we have not had any confirmation of domesticated or house rabbits, which is certainly good. Also want to reiterate to people that we have not seen any changes or new outbreaks in both New York and Washington, where we did see cases earlier in the year. And also there has not been any information of any potential outbreaks associated with California. We'll continue to share this information as more is learned, but at this stage in the game, that's the information that is available. Now, specific to vaccination, as this is a question that's coming up a lot, what is the status? What do we see happening? Now, the vaccines that will work for rabbit hemorrhagic virus are quite efficacious. They do work, but unfortunately, they are unlicensed currently in the United States. So every state that has an outbreak is currently working with their state vet, with the USDA, to get approval to bring that vaccination into those specific states. I know of at least one, potentially two states that have actually already submitted the documentation, which means they're well down that road. We'll continue to gather more information with that and share that with you as well. So we continue to get some great questions from all of you about what are steps that you can take to decrease the risk to your little one. It is extremely important that we think about these different preventative measures. Although I do wanna remind everybody that if you don't live in an area where there's a current outbreak, the overall risk to your animal is extremely low. If you do unfortunately live in an area such as New Mexico or Arizona or Colorado, I would certainly take all of these precautions to heart and I would obviously communicate with your veterinarian regarding the status of a potential vaccination. For everybody else, we're already living in a world where we're taking additional measures and being thoughtful to decrease the risk associated with coronavirus. Take those same measures and apply that to your rabbit. Always wash your hands before and after interacting with your animal. When you come home from work or other outside of the home travels, make sure you're changing those clothes and diminishing any potential of transmission of that virus on your potential clothing. Also, there's no good reason to have bunny parties at this stage in the game. If you don't know where that animal has been, there is no sense in interacting with that rabbit with your rabbit. Also, just be really thoughtful of getting outside. If you live in an area where this is an outbreak or an ongoing issue, we would definitely recommend there be no outside uh, time at all. If you live in another area, it's still okay to spend supervised time with your animal. Just make sure that it is obviously supervised. If we take these additional precautions and we continue to use common sense, the overall risk to your animal is certainly low.